I die tomorrow I hope you hear these words I ain't here to flip no birds or sip no syrup Hope the future generations can get this urge Stay woke, youngin' And avenge these nerds, uh Hey guys, welcome for another exciting installment of The Plug. This is your boy, Sebastian, one-fourth of the nerds that are around. With me today, I have Wells Thompson over here from Four Colors Media. He has a Kickstarter that's going on live right now. It ends Wednesday, the 22nd, so make sure you guys are supporting it. It's called Megaton, right? Megaton. Megaton, there we go. go. So Wells is going to tell us all about his comic, his Kickstarter, his background, how he got bit by a radioactive spider um, Mm -hmm. and got superpowers. So, Wells, uh, for those who don't know who you are, give us the 411, your origin story. Um, Tell us all about you. Absolutely. In 1778, a spider bit a goat. um, (laughs) (laughs) uh, No, my name is Wells Thompson. Uh, I'm a uh, writer from originally from Little Rock, Arkansas, uh, living in Chicago, Illinois. Um, went to school at a place called University of Central Arkansas, where I met uh, my writing partner, Dalton. He's the other writer on the project, uh, Dalton Shannon. And uh, yeah, we have been making comics for about five years now. This is our sixth Kickstarter. Um, We have done con circuits, uh, which was interesting during the pandemic. Uh, We, yeah, have uh, have two ongoing series. We're about to do a graphic novel. Um, Yeah no full steam ahead <laughs> so, so you, the new book is out you guys have the kickstarter and then you, you you guys are not kickstarter rookies because you said this is what your, your sixth kickstarter, uh, right? sixth one yeah so you guys are not kickstarter rookies so tell no. us about the new comic that's there what readers can expect from it what what comic fans can expect from it talk to us about that book absolutely so um yeah mechaton is a sci-fi action comic uh comedy rule of cool you can put a bunch of adjectives on it but uh it's about a glove that crash lands on earth a brother and sister find it and discover that anything they punch while wearing it turns into a mech so they accidentally punch yeah (laughs) they accidentally Mm -hmm. punch a uh, a hot dog stand it turns into a big battle mech with a uh umbrella shield and a uh condiment cannon and uh where there are mechs kaiju must follow so uh you know uh giant radioactive bugs start invading and they gotta throw down protect the neighborhood well, we gotta get you on the on uh, the show when we're covering a mech episode. I love it already. Big For kaijus sure. and everything. Mm-hmm. <laughs> um, a, yeah, we 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 see the Bigfoot. Um, uh, Bigfoot knows karate. That became a big kaiju battle. Mm-hmm. So, so how did your comic? How did this idea of these power gloves and this mech just come to flourish? <laughs> and how did it just come out there? Uh, I well, it was Dalton's idea, like an initial kind of germ of the idea was Dalton's for sure. Uh, and I, it was really just like, you know, you're you're sitting around with your friends and you're just, uh, you know, wouldn't it be cool if Frankenstein punched a, you know, the, and just like spouting nonsense. And I think that's how it started. It was just like, oh, what if anything you punched turned into a mech and like the thing that you punched gave you the weaponry and stuff. And uh, we just kept coming back to it. You know, that's, I think, how we wind up choosing what stories we go with because we have a bunch of you know we have a bunch of ideas that are like one off oh that might be cool and then we never think about them again but the ones that keep coming back to us are the ones that we wind up developing so um yeah we we had that one uh i think i think the initial idea of mechaton turns like 10 today um or wow. something or turn like this year um yeah we, we've had this kind of in the tank for a while and we decided that uh yeah now is as good a time as any to to uh let it see the light. Um, started tooling with the characters a little bit more, started tooling with the concepts, really asking, like, what does that imply for the world? And what we came up with is a super fun, like, s- somewhat like, shonen adjacent, <laughs> uh, superhero adjacent, uh, Saturday morning cartoon adjacent uh, comic full of mechs and, and fun characters and, uh, and wacky hijinks. So tell us who, who's been your favorite character to write in the book. Oh. Give us a little bit of background and follow yeah. one of them. Oh, you're, <laughs> you're making me choose between my children. Um, <laughs> so they're they're all really fun to write. I think my favorite is Hex, just because they're so. There's the, the kind of the main trio are Derek, Leah, and Hex. Derek has the glove. He like it's stuck on him. It won't come off. Leah is his sister. She's 
kind of the backseat gamer and she can see everything that he sees on his phone and kind of pick apart what the weaponry is and, and give him advice. Uh, and then there's Hex, who is dating Leah. Uh, they are a character that belongs in a different genre, basically. Like, I, I describe them as a witch a lot. <laughs> like, they don't belong in a science fiction show and they know it and they're upset about it. Um, and so they, to me, they get the best lines and they have the best attitude and and uh, they kind of create the, the best situations. Um, yeah, no, they, they uh, non-binary Cambodian witch. Uh, I think I introduced them as, uh, it, what is it? Uh, chaotic indie mystic might ruin your life. Uh, pro probably harmless might ruin your life. I wouldn't <laughs> And, and yeah, they, they've been a joy to uh, to get to explore just because they they are kind of like the voice of reason. Everyone else is so enthralled and and excited about the the crazy stuff going on. And they're just like, hey, let's let's not blow up the, the you know, the town. <laughs> <laughs> I, I love it when you when, when, when creators introduce characters like that, that they're like, yeah, I wouldn't really expect this character in this genre. Mm -hmm. Like, what are they doing here? And then they question everything. Like, what's going on? Like, I don't know. Yeah, they're <laughs> they're very much the voice of reason. <laughs> so your artist is um, a gentleman by the name of Fernando. So what was mm -hmm. the process with finding the artist um, who, who actually brought the vision to life? Um, talk to us a little about that and how that relationship built. Yeah, that was incredibly difficult. Um, we we looked at a lot of different artists. We uh, we hired actually uh, two or three different artists to, to actually do it who had to drop out for one reason or another, um, which I'm, I'm happy we ended up where we ended up. Fernando, I think, had the best vision and brought the the comic to life the best um but yeah it was it was extremely difficult uh we we knew we were looking for some we knew we were looking for a, a sort of like s cartoony style expressive cartoony style that wasn't like full-on manga uh but sort of had those that sort of influence and notes to it which uh, you know, asking someone to be just unique enough is is hard enough on its own. And then you come to them with the prospect of, hey, uh, you, in order to do this script, you're going to have to, you know, on the fly, be like, what does a robot that used to be a hot dog cart look like? Or that used to be a house or that used to be a police car? Um, so, yeah, finding someone with the the creative chops to be able to just take that in stride was was quite difficult but uh we were introduced to fernando as a cover artist and the more that we looked at his uh catalog he, he has a uh a web comic called gun punch that he updates semi regularly and the the action and the dy the dynamic sort of uh stuff that he does in that uh it blew me away and, and immediately i was like i think this is what we want um so it took a long time to find him, but once we found him, it was, it was pretty clear he was our guy. Uh, and he jumped in with both feet. He, he loves the concept and he and the characters and, and was so excited to bring the world to life. Uh, yeah, one of my favorite uh, artists that I've ever worked with, for sure. I, I'm, I'm still stuck on this concept of a hot dog cart mech. <laughs> <laughs> I just, I really want to, it's the brainstorm with that. So, yeah. but um, you've been working in this industry for what you've been doing this for um, about five years, you said, and yeah. um, you've worked on other projects. So what's been, um, so Mechaton, when you came, Mechaton, when you came out with the series, mm -hmm. um, how far ahead of this of this comic do you guys have planned? Is this going to be like a multi series? Yeah, Is this going to be a big universe. Talk to us a little bit what we can expect from that. So the like the concept is meaty enough that there's a whole bunch of different things we could do with it. There's definitely a version of Mechaton that's like you know uh, episodic and formulaic and like we're just here to see what the new monster is what the new mech is which is great and I think that 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 could exist but uh, the story that we have is pretty structured and pretty linear uh, and and grows with the characters so uh, we know we want to do three arcs um, and we have you know roughly 15 issues of like that's our main story and then after that, if there's a lot of demand for it, if you know, we want to continue with it, if if the team wants to continue with it, then absolutely, I would love to do. If I could do Mechaton for the rest of my life, I'd be happy. Yeah, absolutely. 
Listen, all you, all you got to tell people is the open line, like, yeah, there's a Mac hot dog cart. That's yeah. it. I love it. <laughs> I mean, growing up in New York, that's that's what it's a hot dog cart. So I'm mm-hmm. picturing my vision, like, oh, that just turned into Mac. It's like a transformer thing for me right there. So you're talking about Mechas. You're talking about robots. You're talking mm-hmm. about Kaijus. So now we're going to get into it a little bit with what is your favorite Mech show, animation, or movie? Just pick because, again, I got to get in your brain right there. Get the that fan. Yeah. Right. Um... I mean, Pacific Rim is is always an easy one to to go to. It's just like a self contained story. It's so good. Guillermo del Toro absolutely killed that movie and sort of captured the energy of of why kaiju's are great. Um, but I mean, pick any Gundam show or Gurren Lagann, for example, is a, is a great Ooh. mecha show. Um, yeah, there there was tons of there are tons of qualifiers and if you really want to dig into it like i'm i like mecha and anime and and books and i've read a lot of them giga is another great one that's uh uh is is a comic book from uh vault that that recently ended its run uh that's pretty phenomenal uh but if you want to talk like serious mecha stuff you ask dalton because he will <laughs> rattle off not just like not just a breadth, but like a weird depth of it. He will pull out stuff from like d- untranslated Japanese 1970s, like kaiju and tokusatsu. And <laughs> it, oh man, it, yeah, because there's just so much stuff out there when people pull oh, up yeah. stuff like, I, oh, I thought I knew Mecca. I know this person knows Mecca. It's like, no. that. Yeah, yeah, Dalton is that person for sure. <laughs> um, <laughs> So, so how many books have you and Dalton worked on together? Uh, when it comes out to this, this been um, your um, so, how many projects have you guys been together with? Um, so we did for like our first couple of, of years uh, doing this, we were doing sort of like do it yourself ash cans, eight page stories, and we we put out like 15, 16 of those. Um, then we took about half of those made a couple more, compiled them into a um, anthology called Descent into Dread and published that with Caliber Comics. So you could say that that was our first book, uh, but we have been working on stuff before that. Uh, and then we have two ongoing series that we've been making through Kickstarter. Uh, Mechaton, this one, uh, which is on its fourth and fifth issue, uh, is what we're funding right now. Uh, and then Frankenstein the Unconquered, which is uh, very in the opposite <laughs> direction. Whereas Mechaton is, I, I don't like using the term all ages because it implies kids book, but it really is like for everyone. Uh, Frankenstein the Unconquered is a hard R, heavy metal action horror in that order that essentially reads like Conan the Barbarian with Halloween monsters. I and That was what I was picturing in my head when you said... <laughs> Frankenstein unconquered. I'm like, is it like Frankenstein, like Conan, like oh, it's just a barbarian? Yeah, yeah he's just <laughs> he's just a big dude with a sword in a post-apocalyptic world that doesn't even that doesn't fear him because of his looks. They fear him because of what he's done. <laughs> um, and and it it yeah, that series is great. It allows us to explore uh, that one. It, that one does feel a little bit more episodic. There is an overarching plot, but. It is a lot more monster of the week. You know, we do uh, the Wolf Man, and we do Jekyll and Hyde, and and the Invisible Man, and and you just kind of bring on a character and and see how that you know shapes the story, um, and and watch uh, Frank brutalize them for for twenty pages. Dude, where have you been? I I, I would I I really wish I saw that on my neck of the woods. I'd like to mm-hmm. sit up, and take my money, like Fry, just give it to you. <laughs> Well, that we will have for sure. Uh, issue issues three and four will be later this year. Uh, we're looking forward to to busting that out. But yeah, no, I'm I'm yeah. I, I love all the projects that we're involved in, and then we're working on on a graphic novel right now uh, that we're bringing to Kickstarter soon called Depths, nice. uh, which is a lot more literary, uh, a lot more uh, feelsy, very large. Actually, it's gonna it's probably gonna wind up being two books. And uh, yeah, I'm looking forward to doing that, but one thing at a time. <laughs> so talk to me a little bit though, um, as a writer, um, mm-hmm. what is your creative process when you're creating these worlds, these characters and these stories? Mm-hmm. So, talk to us a little bit about your creative process. I, I think I just start, so like, it, it depends on the project. There, there are some that start with a really strong image that I wanna build to, or that I kind of form everything around. 
Um, there are some that start with a theme. There are some that start with just, uh, in, you know, that little spark of an idea. Uh, for Mechaton, we had, we had a, a really strong, you know, premise. And uh, my job was to come because the way Dalton operates is is he'll come up with an idea and then and it'll sit there and he'll he might build something around the plot. He might do some banter. Um, but, you know, get, getting it to be like a whole live story uh, he was having difficulty with. So I came in and said, OK, who are these characters? What are they like? Uh, what is this story about? Other than the punching, obviously the punching <laughs> is great, but like, you know, how is this going to hit you in the feels? And it very quickly became obvious that it was about a brother and sister. Uh, it was about fighting for your community. It was about uh, doing the best you can with suboptimal materials. You know, uh, you don't have the best tools for the job, but you got to get the job done anyway. Um. And the more that we approached it from that direction, the more it kind of the, the world built itself out. And, you know, the, these bi these moments came where it was like, oh, well, obviously this would happen because it makes sense with with, you know, the theme of X, Y or Z. Um, you know, obviously this is going to be the big bad in issue t or in, in the second arc because you know, not, not spoiling anything, but, um, so that's, that's how I worked on Mechaton for sure is, is just sort of, uh, starting with the idea, starting with the characters, figuring out what we want to say with them, and then just kind of pushing them forward and saying, well, what would they do with respect to that? We do have an end goal in mind. Like we know what happens yeah. roughly. <laughs> we always knew like what the last fight was going to be, uh, but how we got there was always kind of a question mark, and and we've been filling that in. It's also a matter of um, you know, of of not filling it in too quickly. Uh, by which I mean like, you know, I think a lot of writers have a temptation to to have a really strong roadmap from A to Z before they write the first word on the page. And uh, while I do like having an outline, while I do like generally know what's happening some the best ideas happen in the moment uh and not just in the moment of like when you're writing but the moment of like w when we worked to put out the first issue sometimes you realize oh this thing that happens that was really cool we should we've never even looked at that moment before let's develop that further um yeah there was a moment in frankenstein the unconquered for example where he <laughs> he, he to, just to, to talk about something else he, he sort of brutalizes his family and and like sort of the point of view character of that issue is this little boy named John, uh, and it ends with him ripping out with Frankenstein ripping out his father's arm from the Ooh. socket. Yeah, it's brutal. Um, and that's the thing. And then and then it took us shipping the book and just looking at it again as we're like writing issues two and three and going that would change that boy. Like that would affect that boy. <laughs> We can't just leave him. We can't just never come back to him. We he comes back at some point. He's got to, um, and and he and truly, we had you know all twelve, thirteen issues kind of plotted out, but the, he, that we never considered that. So I think it's really important to allow that sort of spontaneity in the story to go. Oh, this this works. We need to work on this more. No, I think that makes it fun because uh, and you're also revisiting the character because you're saying that like um you know you you're paying attention to the details too mm -hmm. of how that develops that character. I mean um I'm a big Dungeons and Dragons fan um playing Dungeons and Dragons and I remember hearing one of the stories how someone um a party had massacred a shopkeeper or did something to the shopkeeper mm -hmm. for the shopkeeper all of a sudden to turn around at the very end to be the big bad in the campaign <laughs> and want his revenge. That's awesome. <laughs> Yeah, you have to allow those kind of organic moments to play out, I think. Uh, otherwise, it, yeah, the, if you don't, the world feels planned. And it, it doesn't feel like a real world. doesn't feel like a real place. Um, <laughs> I Yeah, I don't want to spoil it. In the, in the first issue, uh, a shop gets wrecked uh, of Mechaton. Like a shop gets wrecked in, in the first brawl called Waifus Only. <laughs> uh, and there's a guy outside who's really, really upset about it. Um, and in issue five, 
again, no spoilers, but the waifus only comes back. It is rebuilt and it is incorporated into the final fight in, in a way that like, I knew I, I have been like holding this joke in <laughs> for, for nearly two years when I realized when we, when we put out the first issue, Oh, we can do this in the fight. Yes. It's like oh your, god, I can't. It's wait. like your it's like your cabbage guy from Avatar. Like, I, like, yeah, cabbages. Exactly. <laughs> it's like oh, waifus. Oh, please tell me he has waifu pillows. <laughs> oh yeah, that was yeah. <laughs> it's sort of ambiguous what the store sells, but yeah, that's the yeah. idea. <laughs> you know, if you know, you know. But no, I mean, this has been a pleasure. So tell, so, so so tell everybody out there where they can find you. Um, we'll have the link up for the Kickstarter. So guys, Absolutely. make sure you guys are clicking the link in the description to support the Kickstarter. You want this comic in your collection especially it's, if you love mecca and awesomeness it's incredible <laughs> shiny and you can get the shiny cover too um yeah we got uh, these for four and five on the uh, campaign but uh yeah you can go right ahead, go right ahead. Ooh, show yeah. it out again we there you go very shiny very chrome uh <laughs> if you're into mad max um yeah no so you can find me on twitter at wells thomp just my name minus S O N uh, at the end. Um, and you can find all of my comics on Kickstarter. I'm usually running one or in the process of running one or talking about uh, doing one in the near future. So uh, all you have to do is follow me on Twitter and you will know, trust me, I will push it out and make sure you, you know. Uh, and yeah, all of my comics are available on uh, on the Kickstarter right now. Not just uh, Mechaton, but also Frankenstein the Unconquered, Descent into Dread, uh, From the Static, which is a horror anthology from Band of Bards that I'm in, both issues of By Visibility from Cat Calamia that I'm in, uh, and there's probably some other stuff I'm forgetting about. Listen, well, I want to thank you for coming on the show. Guys, make sure you guys are going to subscribe on there. Again, um... I'm really excited about that book. Like I said, I'm going to be a fry right now. I'm going to say, shut up and take my money. Here you go. <laughs> <laughs> so this has been another episode of The Plug. Uh, let us know what you guys think about The Plug. You want more episodes? Come on, chime in. Again, we have many great creators ready to come on. Again, it's been on your boy, Sebastian, with Wells Thompson. <laughs>